Harry's wife. Bending the knee, the horror. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and this video provides us with a useful opportunity to enable you to understand how the issue of deference is utilized by the narcissist and is often problematic. An article in the Telegraph newspaper by Camilla Tomenay tells us Harry's wife would not have relished bending the knee to cry monger Catherine. Sussex squatters will insist the Duchess is taking one for the team, but more objective observers may reach a different conclusion. Nothing in royal land happens by accident. From the issuing of official announcements to the planning of royal engagements, a degree of military precision is applied that would make even the most regimental of sergeants, majors, blush. Timing is ever a thing, which makes Buckingham Palace's statement revealing that Harry, and not Harry's wife, will attend the coronation all the more intriguing. And if you'd like an insightful breakdown of what that statement means, then you really ought to watch my video about it being a brutal blow for her in relation to Harry's attendance. Buckingham Palace is pleased to confirm that the Duke of Sussex will attend the coronation service at Westminster Abbey on the 6th of May, read the long-awaited missive, adding to virtually, virtually no one's surprise, the Duchess of Sussex will remain in California with Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. For the truth is, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have known for months that this was the way they were going to broach the May 6th ceremony. Among their Monty Shit Show set, it has been an Oprah secret that Harry was planning to attend without Harry's wife since Spare hit the bookshelves in January, possibly even earlier. This, of course, is the view of Camilla Tomine. I disagree with this. Harry's wife is desperate to attend, but her narcissism prevents her from doing so because of the risks that she faces. The risks that she faces with regard to the threats to control. Essentially, when the issue of the coronation comes upon her radar and the people that are associated with it, the royal family, the press, the British public, her narcissism tells her, the public will probably boo you, the royal family will probably ignore you, the press are going to slate you. Don't go. Assert control by staying away. Of course, remember, because she's an unaware narcissist, she doesn't think to herself, oh dear, I'm going to struggle to get control over the British public, the press, and the royal family, so what I'll do is I'll assert control by staying away from them. Her narcissism dresses it up as something else. So, for instance, she may well think, well, they're all going to be nasty to me, and it's Archie's birthday, so I think I will stay in California because I'm a good mum. And that's how it's presented to her. She does not think in terms of the prime aims. Her narcissism does that for her, like that background app, running subconsciously. So whilst Camilla Tomine believes that Harry's wife would have thought some time ago that she wouldn't be attending, I disagree with that. She's wanted to attend, and there's been attempts to massage the situation so that she would get a more favourable outcome, but ultimately that's failed, thus she's not coming. Camilla Tomine continues by stating that the signs were all there, from the Duchess being almost entirely absent from her husband's book tour, see parts passing as to why that was done, she was hanging him out to dry, to rumours of disgruntlement at Archie and Lilibet's apparent exclusion from the coronation procession. If Harry's wife wasn't willing to help Harry to promote his tell-all book about the firm, then why on earth would she be minded to run the gauntlet of potential egg-throwers outside Westminster Abbey on behalf of her racist in-laws, especially after that South Park episode? That is correct. Her narcissism wouldn't want her to do so. And in what world would the woman who once told Oprah Winfrey the most important title I will ever have is mum, assertion of control, facade management, be comfortable with skipping her elder's fourth birthday in favour of an event that would require her to curtsy not only to her estranged father and mother-in-law, but also her even more estranged brother and sister-in-law? Now remember, it's not the issue about skipping her eldest child's fourth birthday, she doesn't give two fucks about that. 
Of course, she will create the impression that she does, and this is where people who don't understand narcissism get taken in. They think, oh, but she is a good mum. She is concerned about that. She says as such. Yes, well, that's a little bit like somebody saying, hello, I'm a bloke with a beard and cock and balls, but you can call me a woman. Just because you say it doesn't make it the case. And it's very much the case with many narcissists. They will say it, but they won't do it. Harry's wife will readily jettison any occasion that involves her children if her narcissism deems that there's a better opportunity elsewhere. After all, how long did they stay in the United Kingdom last September around the Queen's funeral? She was quite happy to jet off to Uvalde, wasn't she, on a private jet and leave them with the nanny so that she could go and preen herself and pose amongst the memorials. She cleared off on the quasi uh, tour to New York in, I think, September 2021 or thereabouts for the purposes of going to the United Nations and going to Ground Zero of the Twin Towers, etc. Turning up as Chairman Mao visits New York and the Bouncing Berry of Harlem, etc., etc., Children weren't with her then. So don't think that Harry's wife would go, no, I'm not going to go because I need to be at my son's birthday. He doesn't matter at all to her. Children don't. They are just devices that the narcissist can use. What is, of course, of a concern, as Camilla Tomine identifies, is the fact that she would have to curtsy to her estranged father and mother-in-law and her estranged brother and sister-in-law. And therein, that is a huge problem. The Duchess made very clear what she thought about curtsying to Queen Elizabeth II in the couple's shit flicks documentary, where she made an absolute tit of herself with her mock curtsy. She's unlikely to be any more enamoured with the idea of bending the knee and bowing her head to crymonger Catherine, the pregnancy hormone princess, as Tomine writes. Sussex squatters will insist she took one for the team for fear of overshadowing what Harry has described as the biggest day of his father's life, but the Sussex squatters would come out without her to tripe. Harry's wife has no consideration for anybody else. She has no emotional empathy. She doesn't care about overshadowing, but more about that in a separate video. The fact is, the contemplation of having to show deference to the king and queen, to the prince and princess of Wales, fills her with abject horror. She is Harry's wife, Empress of Woke, Queen of the Universe. They should be bowing and curtsying to her. She believes that she's far more important because her narcissism tells her that she's far more important. Accordingly, the contemplation that she has to show respect and deference to them offends her sense of control. Her narcissism reacts with horror. What? Me? Bow to them? No chance. Of course, were she to attend and not do it, it would cause massive damage to her facade, so her narcissism, rather than cause her to attend and go through it with gritted teeth, decides that, along with the risk of being booed and the responses of the British press, mean it really is going to be too dangerous for you to attend. Therefore, do not, and assert control by staying in that position of withdrawal. The narcissist, of course, wants you to show respect to him or her. After all, they're more important than you, and you should get down on bended knee and show your thanks, demonstrate you're not worthy. You should show due deference. And particularly, where that narcissist has a hierarchical position over you, a title, status, they will regularly remind you of that fact. If they hold a superior position to you at work, you'll be told of it. Where they hold a title, which convention states that you should show respect for it, you'll be obligated to do so, or you'll get a tongue lashing or social ostracization for failure to do so. Narcissists love having titles, hierarchies, and status, because it's a means of triangulating you with that title, status, hierarchical position, so that we can assert control over you. Often, it brings with it residual benefits also. The desire to put you in your place and remind you of your place, because after all, you are just a little person, is extremely tempting to the narcissist and happens time and time again. However, when the shoe is on the other foot and the narcissist is expected to respect your title, your position, that doesn't matter. In the narcissist's mind, you don't deserve it. 
that it's an empty title, or that you've been overpromoted, and therefore why should they show respect to you? As always, the hypocrisy of the narcissist is demonstrated, and it's a simple case that for Harry's wife, the horror of having to show deference, particularly to the nemesis, a princess of Wales, ultimately proved too much for her. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.